Oh, you're welcome. Now oh, that's one guy who knows me. I guess he got a pass thanks to me. All right, ready? Hi, my name is Jason Lanier. We're here in uh, Las Vegas for WPPI 2015. It's going to be super awesome. We have a great crew here. We have beautiful models, sexy assistants, fantastic creative designers, and you have crazy guy in the fedora. So I'm speaking for uh, Sony today, speaking for Rotolite. We're going to go in and get started and uh, pretty much wreak havoc. So, let's go. Such an awesome picture. Yay! Who took that? All right. Oh, yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This is so cool. Oh, we know you know, you know, man. Steve, Steve Gray, man. Let me tell you my quick story. Yeah, go ahead. Bam! Bam! Yeah, you did the, um, Ten reasons. why I left. That night I was on the bed, man. I was listening to us. Yeah, this stuff starts to make sense. But, you, yeah. you come to my presentation at 1.30. 1.30. Right here. Right here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, man. It's great. So, you know what? Let me bother you so I can get a picture with him. No. Did you? How about that? Oh, absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. Yeah. I talk about you all the time. All right. right. The man with the hat. Hey, man. I'm right. Can I take a photo? Absolutely. How you doing, good, man? You good, honey? Thanks, man. All right, so you're going to set the first camera right there. So guys, what I'm here to talk to you today about is switching, right? Because that's what everybody wants to know, whether or not you can switch. Um, I want to preface my, my presentation by saying everything that you see, the pictures here, these are all just Lightroomed. I haven't Photoshopped any of them. Okay, so they're just developed in Lightroom. And the reason I do that is because I really want to give you guys a fair representation of how the work comes out. Now, clearly I've developed it. I'm not trying to say it's, it's raw. But what I am trying to state is that those pretzels are making me thirsty. What, <laughs> like Kramer. What I am trying to say is that uh, I want you guys to understand when you, when you look at photography, you know, the hardest thing for me is always is, is what I'm seeing, what I'm getting. And that's the hardest part. When people, when I switched over to Sony, that was the biggest question that I had. So everything that we have here, I actually pulled up the, the metadata if you guys have questions. And just so you guys know, everything that I do, it's an interactive experience, okay? So as we're going, if you guys have a question, I love the, the fedora, yeah. Can I take a picture? Of me? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Why do you think I got all dolled up? <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't wear nice clothes normally. Normally I'm wearing like, $30 construction boots going through abandoned places. Take as many pictures of me as you want, just don't like make me naked on the bottom. So that would be scary. So um, what I'm gonna show you guys today is not, you guys, some of you probably seen my 10 reasons why I switched. I really wanna go through the, the, ten re uh, the, the reasons how. Because people say, okay, great, it's, I understand why you switched, but now I don't understand how you did it. So with that being said, obviously every picture here is um, is with the Sony camera, and I'm going to walk you guys through the process of how this all came to pass. So I want to ask you guys: How do most of us choose our camera manufacturers? The ones who? How do we choose the cameras that we shoot with? You either go with Nikon or Canon, right? I know you're supposed to say Nikon, but I've always Japanese. said Nikon. Japanese, I know, but but uh, most people, you know, they go with Nikon or Canon, right? right, right. And uh, you know, I remember a couple years ago, people would ask me about that, and people, oh, would you shoot Sony? And I'm like, no. And uh, you know, I was one of those pros that I make fun of in my video. I really was. And it, what the the light bulb started going off for me uh, as I went through the process of finding these cameras. And really, what it boils down to, guys, is we really pick our cameras based upon walking into a camera store and uh, somebody at a camera store tells us what to buy. Right? They tell us what works. Now, I don't mean to be rude. Well, here we go. But um, the vast majority of people working at camera stores don't shoot that much, I guess is the best way to put it. So 
When you're asking advice at a camera store, you're really asking somebody who has a motive to sell you something. Please keep that in mind. So most of us buy cameras based upon what somebody recommended to us uh, or based upon what, like my dad, my dad shot an icon. Now I want to make it clear like I did in my video, I have, there's no bone, I have no bone to pick with any camera manufacturer. Uh, but I just want us to think about that because when, you're, when you hold those cameras in your hand, keep in mind why you're holding them. And why don't we switch guys? What's the reason why we don't switch? Lenses, right? Why? I mean, why? Why did I wait? I, I was I shot Nikon for seven, eight years. Why did I never switch? It's too much, right? There's no way. There's absolutely no way you're going to switch. That's what I thought. I mean, why in the world would I switch camera manufacturers? And what you, what I really want you to think about, above and beyond anything, is when we make a decision based upon us being in a place of being stuck. It's not really a logical decision. We're just making it because there's no better alternative. That's the honest truth. And that's what I did for years and years and years and years. Now to be fair, you know, the, the, the mirrorless market wasn't in a place to where I would, I would switch. Now it is. More than anything, I was talking with my assistant about this the other day. I shot Nikon for seven years. I've had assistants, I've had people that have worked for me. I could never ever get them to switch. They shot Canon. I could never get them to switch and that's really eye-opening for me. When you have, I, they work for me, right? I ordered them to switch, they refused. I cajoled them to switch, they refused. I tried to bribe them to switch, they never would. And I think what really happened to me was when I went through my conversion process, what was most important to me, what was most telling to me is that my whole team switched. And not because I told them to. And not because they got a discount to do so. They switched because they wanted to. So here's my little uh, Fedora cameras here. Okay, this is, what, this is what happens when I'm laying out in the middle of the desert and I have nothing better to do. What I want us to keep in mind, this isn't just about Nikon, Canon, Sony. This is about a change in our industry. And I really want you guys to grasp onto that idea. It really is. We're used to carrying around huge cameras that cost tons of money because we think we have to. That's the honest truth. We think we have to. We think we have no better alternative. When I started shooting with Sony's, it really, it literally opened up my mind. And I'm going to share with you guys how that happened. So how did I switch? What's my story? I was, I bought my, my uh, A6000. I went down to Best Buy, bought it, started shooting with it. I had projects coming up in Detroit and coming up in Ethiopia. And I was really concerned. I wanted a lighter camera. I wanted something that could give me awesome results. I wanted to make sure it shot raw. I wanted to be able to change my Kelvin. I wanted something that gave me amazing image quality. And I wanted it in a smaller body. I just did. I mean, I, what, people ask me all the time. I mean, I switched. I've been robbed. I've been carjacked in Paris. I've had my gear stolen out of my car in New York. So, so theft was a big deal to me. I'm going to a third world country to shoot. I don't want to lug around all my gear. And I'm going, you guys, for those who follow me, you guys know I run into abandoned buildings. I do crazy stuff. So I really wanted gear that I could take anywhere with me. So I went to Ethiopia, started shooting, right? You know, this shot here, before I made the full conversion, you know what I went with? I got an A6000 and I bought a Sony NEX5R used off of B&H Photo for $250. Okay. We were in Ethiopia and we went to this village with this man. Okay. This is not a posed image. He was standing next to a door where there's even a video out on this. This was shot with the NEX 5R 6400 ISO with the 55 to 210 lens. I'll never forget the first time I met with Sony. They're like, what lenses do you like? I'm like, oh, I like that 55 to 210. They're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I love it. They're like, really? <laughs> Because you know it's not a fixed aperture. It's not something that's going to give you that, that that your normal person would think is going to give you amazing results. It's not a Zeiss, right? It's not a Sony G lens. It's a freaking three hundred dollar can a lens, right? So I started shooting with these guys, right? Shot more in the village. That was with the NEX 5R, 55 to 210 lens. Okay, ISO 400, 5.6. This right here. I went to Niagara Falls. I started doing workshops. Went here. This is shot with the A6000, 55 to 210 lens, ISO 4000. 
What happened to me is I bought my first, I bought the A6000 beginning of July. I ended up going and I um, went to Ethiopia. First I went to Detroit, then I went to Ethiopia. Then I got back and I went and did this workshop. This is my Niagara Falls workshop. And I started shooting with it. I couldn't believe the results I was getting. There was no planned effort for me to leave. Sony didn't pay me to leave. Sony never gave me a camera to leave. Just the truth. People accuse me of it all the time. It didn't happen. Okay, Sony's here. They'll tell you that it didn't happen. I just, I just started shooting with them. I never truly intended on it sw changing out my Nikons. I really didn't, guys. And as I started shooting, the conversion process in me really occurred when I was shooting and I was getting crazy shots. And I'm like, wait a minute. My arms don't hurt. My back doesn't hurt. I don't have to, you know, bend over backwards to get a shot. And now people accuse me, people watch my videos, you know what they say? They say, Jason, I can't believe you get such great shots and you're so lazy. And I'm like, what do you mean I'm lazy? Like I go crazy places, what are you talking about being lazy? And you know why? I figured it out. I shoot like this now. If you guys watch my videos, this is how I shoot. Every time I'm, I'm just doing this and I'm grabbing my camera. This is the beer can lens, by the way, awesome lens. And I grab my camera and this is how I shoot all the time and it's not I don't know why but now that I used to be this right 4,000 freaking pounds this up to my head and I really I got to say as a personal note when you wear a fedora the eyepiece thing doesn't work <laughs> just does not jive oh she, she you understand me right girl so I'm doing this and I'm shooting and now nine times out of ten this is how you'll see me shoot you guys watch my videos this is what I'm doing all the time and it's absolutely amazing shooting like this all the time so I start shooting with these and, and as they say, the proof is in the pudding. Went down to Niagara Falls, under the waterfalls. You're not supposed to do this, by the way. But uh, we did this shoot and it was absolutely awesome. This is just with the freaking, I put a Photix Metro's flash just right on my A7S. I shot this with the Roken, say again. Oh, I, well, yeah, people say you can't shoot Sony, it'll get wet and it'll break. Right, right. What a joke. I mean, I shoot with this stuff all, I trash my gear. I use my gear. You gotta use your gear. You're not gonna get great shots by babying your gear, guys. Seriously. What a waste of time. Take your gear out, use it, pound it, have a time of your life. Brakes, you know, that's the coolest thing, too. Freaking A6000 is, what, 500 bucks? All right, I break it. All right, great, I'll buy a new one. I go, I five A6000s to one D800. Think about the math. Oh, it's gonna break. Do you know I've, I've submerged my A6000s? Sony should cover their ears right now. I've submerged my A6000s. You watch my Ethiopia videos, they, I've shot them out in pouring rain. No sleeves, nothing on them, because I need to shoot. When I put all that crap on my, on my camera, I can't shoot. I literally can't shoot, so I don't use it. So how did I do this? I literally, and I know you're not supposed to do this too, but I'm full of stuff you're not supposed to do. You know, the lens gets wet, this is what I do. Start shooting. Lens gets wet, start shooting. That's what you do. What am I gonna do? Take it back to, you know, some chamber like that and, you know, take some microfiber cloth? No way, that's not me. The bottom line is I want, I want you're giving me crazy looks, right? Who's this, this crazy guy in a fedora? People say that all the time, right? I am off my rocker. But uh, I think really the light, this was in August that I did this set down in Niagara Falls. This is again at my Niagara Falls workshop, A6000. Guys, when I'm getting shots out of my A6000, the camera body costs 600 bucks, five, 600 bucks, whatever it is. When I get shots out of a camera that costs $600, and I'm used to getting shots like this out of cameras that cost 5,000, at some point you have to stop telling yourself to not be stupid. You really do. Because if you are needlessly spending money, you're just throwing your money away. It makes no sense to me. Absolutely no sense. And this is what another thing pros tell me. Well, you know, it should be harder to shoot. Sony makes it too easy. <laughs> and it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I mean, if that's the case, we should just put, I don't even know what it is. I'm not a photography scholar. But you know that thing they throw over, like in the olden days, the Westerns, and poof. And we might as well just go back to that and make it super hard. It doesn't make sense to me. You guys need to start thinking logically about your decisions and not going back to that loyalty beyond reason. Seriously, it'll change your photography. So what are the five main reasons that I switched? Now, I'm not gonna, go, I'm not gonna regurgitate the 10 reasons. You guys, some of you may watch that video. I'm gonna tell you how, really how, because that's the most important part. That's what my followers ask me all the time. Okay, we understand why, but 
how did you do it? What's the, what are the lenses that you bought? And I'm going to go through that with you guys. Live view. See, I like live view because my clients like to do ransom letters as part of their wedding day photography. When live view first came out, why did we hate it? Why did we hate live view? Because all pros poo poo live view. They say it's for rookies. They say it's for consumers. By the way, if you buy anything at Best Buy, they say you're, you're not a pro either. I mean, I've heard all of it. But why, do we, why did we not use live view? What's the reason? It's the lag, right? You push the shutter and it goes ching, 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 right? You can't use it. It's completely unusable. Therefore, it's garbage. What, what the other guys did is they came out with cameras that weren't ready for use. And we didn't use them. So immediately, Live View got a bad name, which really sucks. Now, when I bought the A6000, the first thing I did is I said, I don't want that Live View crap. Right? So I, I want, what's that? Same thing, right? Live views for, that's, that's for moms and iPhones, right? And dads and iPhones, right? We don't want that. So first thing we did is I started, I, I, it was so funny because I would shoot, 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 shoot. And then before I knew it, it took about 10 days and I, I haven't, I've never had my eye back. I just turned the electronic viewfinder off. Probably shouldn't say that. But I'm telling you guys, this live view, you don't understand how it unleashes your creativity and it, it enables you to build your composition. When your face isn't jammed into the back of a piece of big black metal, and you can actually look at what you're creating. Do you guys understand the, the, the flexibility that gives you? It's phenomenal, truly. You guys need to start thinking differently. Camera manufacturers have told us what we need, and we haven't told them what we want. That's the problem. That is the problem. They've told us, well, this is, this is good enough, and then they come out with updates, and the updates are garbage. They come out with updates, oh, it's gone from 18 megapixels to 19. So what? And that's where I got frustrated. This live, you guys, it is legit. Okay? Size and weight. Guys, stop listening to people when they say you need a heavy camera. Seriously. I, when I, start, when I started shooting with, with my Nikons, when I would go to do a shoot, the, do you guys ever notice this? Do you notice the first hour or two, you're super creative? You're getting on the ground, you're climbing tall buildings, you're doing all this stuff, right? Do you ever notice, there's a lot of you, this is really cool. Do you ever notice that hour two, hour three, hour four into your shoot, your bride's standing there and you're like, there you go. <laughs> hey, you look beautiful, babe. Oh, that's awesome. And she's like, what happened to that guy or that gal that was laying all over the floor? Now that guy or that gal needs some Motrin right now, okay? It's just not working for me. I, when I started using this, I realized the size and the weight truly mattered. You know, and when I make fun of pros about, oh, how it needs to be a big camera, guys, some pros really, they, they, they feel great when they have this huge long thing. And they'll, they'll, they'll call them toys. And the bottom line is, I love the fact that my toy can outshoot the dinosaurs. I love it. I do my job easier. I get better shots. My, creati my creativity never ends because I can shoot, 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 shoot. You'll find me, you guys come to my shootout, you come to my workshop, you come to anything I do, you'll see hour 10 is the same as hour one because I'm not exhausted. I get better shots for my clients. I get better shots for my clients, I make more money. I make more money, my wife is happy. Right, that's the way life works. Tilt screen. Guys, this thing is single hand, okay. Guys, go to, I want you to envision in your mind, right? You're at a wedding. This is what we do, right? With the, with the dinosaur DSLRs. We go like this, we put the camera up, it's the first dance, right? And we go and we put it on wide focus, right? Put it on wide focus, like an F, F6, F8, whatever, so it'll have a good focal. And then we'll just, we'll walk up and just shoot them like this, hoping that we get a great shot. And then, if we get one great shot, we're artists, we're artists, we're artistic, right? We got some amazing shot. I mean, you just got lucky. That's all it is. You just got lucky, and then, and then if it's a little blurry, it's artistic. What a bunch of bull crap. The bottom line is, if you hold the camera up and you're actually co composing your shot, the shot's amazing. Guys, I can't tell you how much better my photography is. There's absolutely no two ways around it. My photography is so much better now because Sony has given me the tools to, it's unleashed my creativity. I was blocked. I want you guys to understand that when I'm talking, I want you to think about those things. 
This is a great example here, okay? When people say you don't need tilt screens, this is the production image of me shooting this shot. You're telling me we don't need tilt screens? I, I get shots I never could dream of getting. Why? Because I'm not gonna climb into the water during a wedding to shoot, because I have the rest of the wedding to shoot. Now me, I normally, I'd probably try to walk on water, I'd fail miserably. But the bottom line is, you getting shots like this that are absolutely outstanding. People say Sony lenses suck, right? They're ridiculous. They're amazing. This is with the 16 to 35 FE Zeiss. It's a fantastic lens, absolutely fantastic lens, okay? The lens, I'm gonna go through the lenses if I have time and show you guys what I use because I really want you to see how it's possible. Oh, I love this one. To upload via Wi-Fi. I hear this all the time. Would you actually, in your right mind, would you upload an unedited shot? Okay, guys, this is how we used to do it, right? We used to take a picture in the back of our camera with our camera phone and then upload that. It's absolutely, we're, we're trashing our work. We're absolutely trashing the work. This is what I do now. Does that look like garbage to you guys? Now, just so you guys can understand everything, this is straight out of the camera, and I just print screen this on my Mac and send it to Sony for the presentation. So we're talking 50 kilobytes or something. That's how good the Sony TVs are. But what I'm trying to tell you is, I post this, I get 220 likes instantly on Instagram. That's straight out of the camera. You ever tried, to, you ever tried the Wi-Fi on the Nikon D750? You might as well call the Pony Express. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's useless. That's the point I keep trying to make. They, they throw stuff at us. Oh, we have Wi-Fi. Yeah, but it doesn't work. That's the point I'm trying to make. So when you... Well, you should switch. I think Nikon's buying back some of the gear. You can go sell it. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you guys is your friends upload horrible pictures all the time. When you take a... When you know what you're doing and you take a great shot, that was just taken in Nelson a couple weeks ago. We're going to go out and do a workshop there later this week. But that's just taken in Nelson. That's straight out of the camera. That's converting that raw file in my camera to JPEG. It's going straight up to Instagram. I upload it to Instagram. If you guys upload to Instagram, it'll spread it to Facebook, Tumblr, Flickr, everywhere. So I've now, that one picture that I just shot, it's up there, right? It's absolutely amazing. This is a shot I took at a wedding, okay? You guys, you're... What you need to understand is your clients are beating you to the punch. The friends. You go and shoot a wedding, what happens? You shot that wedding, everyone uploads their horrible images and they are atrocious, right? They're horrible, they're out of focus, blah, blah, blah. Then what, two weeks later, you finish your shots, you upload them, and what happens? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. There is no single better piece of marketing for yourself than by doing this. I will upload my images to Instagram. I will use, like here, your clients always have a hashtag. I'll upload the hashtag, and before you know it, everyone at that wedding is seeing my images. I am now the face of that wedding. I have clients come up to me at the wedding, or, or guests come up to me at the wedding and say, I want you to shoot my wedding. I want you to shoot my senior portrait. I want you to shoot whatever it might be just because they're seeing my work. You know, what did we used to do in the old days? We'd put our laptop up, we'd show a slideshow. Who cares? Or we'd bring our laptop, we'd bring a wireless card, we'd upload it. Who cares? This is the future, guys. Be part of the future. Seriously. This is just, I, I don't understand why more people don't do this. What's that? Okay. you say that one more time you going right from your camera to the web? Dude, it's going right from the camera. It goes to my phone. And then right up. Well, I thought maybe we were doing right the camera, right to the Now that'd be cool. I'll talk to Sony about that. So <laughs> maybe they, maybe we could build an Instagram app inside the camera. That would be really cool. I never shoot JPEG. Don't ever let anyone tell you you should. That's garbage. Okay, so. If you edit and if you want to shoot your kids' friends thing for free in JPEG, go ahead. If you want to shoot anything professionally, you shoot raw. Yeah. Um, now, there's me with my lovely little cameras. But 
Guys, you talk about the stuff that are focus peaking, zebra, remote control. Have you guys seen the freaking image stabilization on this? One sixth of a second handheld with the A7 Mark II. Seriously, it's outrageous. Outrageous, guys. I've never been able to shoot with a camera handheld that slow. Normally, I always tell my, my workshop attendees the sixtieth of a second. The bottom line is what I'm telling four minutes. All right, I only have four minutes left to gap. The bottom line is, guys, these, these things will really help your photography. I mean, they really will. Focus magnification, you can focus in on something, you click it, before you know it, it zooms into the shot so you get spot on perfect focus. Okay? All right. So I have four minutes to tell you. So, can the Sony cameras do everything the other guys can do? This is shot with an NEX 5R. <laughs> okay? $250 from B&H Photo. Off camera flash. Yes. These cameras do off camera flash, guys. You can put any triggers on them, they're going to fire off camera flash. Don't let people tell you you can't. You can do off camera flash. You can use many, 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 many systems. I use the, you can use the Godox, you can use the Interfit, you can use whatever you like. But I mean, they, 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 the off camera flash is great. Autofocus, guys. Fast autofocus, 179 focal points on the A6000. You see those marching ants crawl around? It's tremendous. This is shot with the A6000. This is one question I get all the time. What would I take to a wedding? I would take an A7 II and an A6000. That's what I would take to a wedding. Absolutely. Okay. Check out that shot. That is a freaking killer shot right there, right? That's with the A7S. I'm telling you guys, they're the proof's in the pudding. Look at the cameras, look at the shots. That's all you need to know. The shots are just as good, if not better. The cameras are cheaper, they weigh less, and you have tons more options, and they're more technologically advanced. Continuous LED lighting. You can shoot with these with the video lights all day long. That poor, I mean, that poor girl was freezing in Detroit where we shot that. Macro photography, okay. I want to show you guys, because these are questions I get, can you really do all these things? And the, the answer is absolutely yes. High speed sync. Okay, this is at uh, two thousandths of a second. This is the Photix Metro system, which works great for Sony, by the way. But you can, I just want you guys to know that there are these options available to you. Silhouettes. That's with the 16 to 35 FE Zeiss. Again, this is Lightroom stuff, guys. I haven't even Photoshopped it. Because I want you to see what the cameras are doing, not what my Photoshop skills are. This depth of field you see here, this is grass from me laying in the ground. I put the 135 millimeter 1.8 Zeiss on my camera, laid in the grass, and uh, with the LAEA4 adapter. I mean, you talk about lenses, guys. You put the, that adapter on your camera, autofocus, auto exposure, everything. I don't do auto exposure, but I do autofocus. It's tremendous. And then you have the full array of A mount lenses that you can use. Seriously, it's tremendous. Here's just examples of other shots, guys. This is the one third. This is the 135 Zeiss. This is a 16 to 35 Zeiss. I mean, I've just been taking these cameras all over the place. It has 6400 ISO on the A7S. Absolutely no noise reduction. No noise. I don't. I don't do that kind of stuff. I need shots that just move. I need to be able to take my work and do really crazy fun stuff with it. Okay. That's the, A7, that's the A7S, this is the A6000. As we're talking a darkly lit theater and we're getting great shots. Macro photography, that's with the uh, A7S. This is with the A6000 with the freaking $250 macro E-mount lens and I'm getting shots like that. Shots like that with the 250, I'm used to shooting with the 105 Nikon macro. That's with the 30 millimeter 2. Uh, 3.5 macro with Sony. I'm telling you guys, the sky's the limit. So there's me just being crazy, doing my thing. And my time is up. But what I think, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank you guys for following. And, and most of, I really want you guys to open your minds as to what's possible. I do have time afterwards because I have to get off the stage. If you guys want to ask me questions about the gear, I'd be more than happy to answer. We're also doing a shootout tonight if you guys want to join us at 6. You can come for that and you can check, watch me use all this stuff. And we have a workshop later, so this week. So thank you guys. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for following and uh, go Sony.
on YouTube. Yeah. Really great stuff. Uh, I've been to that factory in Detroit you went to. The Fisher? Before you went there. Yeah. Like two years ago. Did you? I've been following you since you've been on YouTube. Man. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, can I get a selfie with you? Absolutely. My, my wife is not going to believe me. Here, one of my guys will take it. What were your questions? Yeah, just a couple of questions. So I've got the uh, 16 to 35, the 55 1.8, and the 70 to 200 F4. Any other lenses you recommend kind of right away without going with the A mount adapters or anything else to kind of. A mount adapter. Really? Just it, it's really that worth it. Really? It really is worth it. 100%. Any other lenses you would recommend kind of picking up? Just I do landscape, but mostly just portrait, fashion, glamour. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Oh, no. His wife and my wife are going to kill us both. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, right. Yeah, so oh, yeah, anything yeah, else you recommend? Like the, like the Zeiss uh, 8514 yeah. or something like that? That's a good piece of glass. I, I went a lot of A-mount. Did you? I'm not going to lie. I'll show you my bag. All right, brother. We'll see you tonight. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Can I have a picture with you? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Really yeah, quick. yeah. Which mirrorless do you like? The 7 A7 seven two. Okay, awesome. All right, so see you then. Hi. Hello. Okay, I got an A6000. Yeah. And it's fabulous. Yeah. And I shot my first engagement, and it was the best thing ever. And I have a question for you now. Yeah. Because, you know, like you, I have all my Nikon stuff. And I know I can use the um, the lenses. Um, is the met and you did something about get rid of the lenses. Okay. I, I, I you know me. I just I know, but no I know, BS. I, know, I, know. I tried. Okay. But the honest truth is, I I shot some of those with the Rokinon, but I got I got sick of it. Okay. I got sick of not the autofocus. Okay. So if you're, you can't autofocus. No, at lenses. all. At all. And, and I figured that. So. The honest truth is, some of the here's what you do. Even if you come to the shootout tonight, I'll I'm gonna explain a lot of this. Okay. I wanted to have more time. I just ran out of time. Okay. But I put that LAEA4 adapter on my Sony, and I just buy all the I buy used A mount glass, okay. and I get it cheap. Okay. I do want to. All right, let's get a selfie. Say hi. <laughs> Um, you're the reason, man, that I switched. Yeah? Yeah. Sean Shoemaker. Oh, you're Sean, yeah! <laughs> I'll be shooting with you tonight, man. I'm That's tonight. fantastic. Yeah, you're a rock star, bro. Oh, thank you're you. A rock star. I'll thank see you. you tonight. One of my favorite photographers, it's like, you know, I'm using. Can you open up the backpack real quick? This is what I wanted to have time for, I just didn't. So. This is a 28 to 75 uh, f2.8. This okay. lens is just. I bought this used off B&H. Now the only, the only lens you have this one. I have the 16 Yeah, this this is uh, this is a beast. This is the 85 A mount. Okay, that's the 1.8. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. And, and, and that's uh, how does that compare to the, the like the Zeiss 1.4? Pretty. Good. No, it's not as good as the Zeiss. Yeah, but I'm not gonna lie to you, but yeah. it, I mean, it's, it's really it's good. Yeah. Yeah. This is the best lens I've ever used. This is a 135, 1.8 Zeiss. The 135. Let's see, here's the adapter right here. The, adap okay. the adapter isn't as big as you think. It's really. That's true. Yeah. And that has the quick release on it. So. And you love that one? The, this lens? If like Brad Pitt hired me to shoot something, yeah. he's like, I want to look the best I've ever looked. I'm yeah. going to take this lens. Okay. I tell him to stand about 10 feet back. And <laughs> take this. This lens is phenomenal, man. This is the beer can they talk about. Oh yeah. This is a 70 Minolta. to two. This is 70 to 210 straight f4. Here's a bunch of more Minolta. This is the 51.7 Minolta. Okay. This was 50 bucks, dude. Okay. Seriously, yeah, 50 bucks. Awesome. Yeah, I need to get some pick up some too. This is the. Um, 35 to 70 Minolta F4. Okay. okay. And then the rest of these, these are just the E mounts. Yeah. So I mean, okay. if you're just focused on the on the full frame, that's what I would get. Okay. That's what I use, and they're tremendous, dude. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna get that adapter. I think having access to the other A mount lenses would be great. It changes it because you know when people say there's not enough lenses and all that. Yeah. Once you get this, and you can get into the world of the A mounts. Yeah. Just trying to figure out what the metabones, the can and stuff are. No, the metabones is garbage. Really? Don't yeah. use it. Okay. It's garbage. Yeah. Total waste of money. What about the photo die off stuff? Is it all right? Or? Well, the, the metabones is good for manual. Don't don't yeah. depend on it for auto. Yeah. Don't depend on anything for auto. Except the LAEA4. Thanks so much, man. I all really right, brother. appreciate it. I'll get out of your hair. We'll see you later. Yeah, thanks again.